Happy holidays, y'all, from Prim's Hood Cinema and The Ridge. Y'all know The Ridge. They make those slick little wallets everybody likes. The new year is coming up, and if you're trying to get organized and get your life together, I think The Ridge Wallet can help a lot. They're super high quality, super durable, super stylish. I get compliments all the time when I pull mine out. Everybody love me. The Ridge Wallet can hold up to 12 cards, plus there's plenty of room for your cash. It fits naturally into your pocket. It doesn't bunch up awkwardly like your typical leather wallets, and it really does feel good to get rid of all the extra clutter I used to carry around. Plus, it comes with a lifetime warranty. Yes, your whole life, they'll fix your wallet for you. On top of that, The Ridge will let you test drive the wallet for 45 days, if you don't like it, you can send it back for a full refund. Then you just go back to your old wallet or whatever you're doing. There's really no risk at all. They've got over 30,000 five-star reviews and they're growing every day. There's over 30 different styles like this sleek burnt titanium design or this tactical carbon fiber design or whichever one, whichever is your personality. You follow your own be your own person, bro. Go to ridge.com slash prim for 10% off and free shipping and returns worldwide anywhere in the world. Shout out to my international fans, by the way. I'll see y'all, bro. Buy a wallet. Again, ridge.com slash prim. Get the discount. 10% off just for you. Free shipping worldwide. At least do the test drive and see how you feel about it. Ridge.com slash prim. Go there now. I'm the boss of you. Go there now. It starts off with Ving Rhames character named Holiday in church going stupid on this piano. It's a pretty lit service. He a good Christian. It's good Christian fun. Also, it's Christmas time, I think. I don't know. I just then it comes to this drag queen burlesque type of deal. I don't know exactly what it is. It's not sexual though, I don't think. There's old people here or whatever. They just watching them sing and dance giving them money sometimes, it might be sexual. The penthouse's oldest treasure, Holiday Damn, bro. I don't know if I was ready for this. It's not the gayness. It's not the gayness. It's more so just seeing buff-ass, scary-ass Ving Rhames dancing like Betty Boop and being kind of really good at it, it's throwing me off a little bit. This is not his usual role, obviously. Alright, so this is definitely sexual for some people. I get it now. Some people it is, some people it's not. It is for this nigga though, definitely. But you want some dick? I'm wondering what the money split is gonna be like, by the way. This buff ass nigga is taking all these tips, bro. I hope we plan on sharing with these hoes. Oh man, look at this nigga hair, bro. This nigga look like Beethoven. We have a flashback now outside of this house. A long time ago, Ving Rhames' husband or boyfriend or something bought him the house. We could tell people, you live on one side, I live on the other, you know, we play the game. The boyfriend was a cop and he died or something. Ving Rhames is sad about it. He don't like that. He shows up at the funeral and all the cops and everybody mad at him and his gayness. It's not cool. That's bad Christian, bro. Baby, you did right by keeping me in the corner crack of your closet. Don't touch me. Baby love, I need you. I've heard enough of this in my church. And Deacon Break Booker. my heart and leave me sad. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Tell me what? No! 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 That's actually sad as fuck. Imagine being him and the person you love dies and you can't even be at their funeral or mourn them properly. It's messed up just cause the way you dress. Cause you like to wear women's clothing. I think it was the women's clothing that set everybody off. You should've wore a suit or something cause they probably wouldn't even have noticed you. But I get it. You shouldn't have to do that. You taking a stand or whatever. I get what you're doing. Deacon Break Booker. my heart and leave me sad. Give me the mic. Plan on starting my new year there. Mm, new beginnings. Well, Paris is the place. Two tickets? No, just one. If you're looking, Paris is the place. Race, 
Who you fuck, it doesn't matter. Bing Rhames is planning on moving to France or some bullshit to escape his sad hood life. He goes out later that day to chill with his homeboy. He got this sassy, non-Christian homeboy named Blue. They about to hang out and go do another drag show. Where are you, uh, Blue, I'm on my way. Now, I know we're not taking that broke down car. You're but yes, I'm, I'm taking my car and it's not going to break down, okay? Right. Bing Rhames' car breaks down on the way to the show. Now they stuck and Blue is fucking so pissed about it. He don't like that. God, you like a sissy with his legs stuck in mid-air. Ready, but nothing's happening. Mm. Oh, oh. Help me! Help me! We don't have my face! Holiday, what you do? Miss Holiday! Get back over here, girl! She might have an Uzi! What is this terrible stock music, bro? This shit does not fit the tone of this movie at all. This shit sounds like a happy dog movie. Holiday, what you do? Miss Holiday! Holiday! You know what? I'm gonna kill you! Put your hands off me! Now, come on! Yeah, throw another punch! I want the Undertaker to earn his feet! Here, woman. Oh, no, I'll tell you my story! Ain't no my right. story. Come on now, please! Not my mama's story! You're never gonna be shit! You ignorant, junkie! You can't read! You don't know if I got right! Bing Rame saves the lady and takes her and her daughter back to his house. He got two houses. One was the boyfriend house. I don't know. It's two houses. It makes sense in the movie, I can't explain it. The lady name is actually Alfre Woodard. She in the movie. She a bass head or whatever real bad. She's also a writer and she be writing beautiful poetry. They used to be young and firm, quick to part and slow to learn. She's got a daughter also, this little fake Moesha type character. She real smart, but her sad hood life be holding her back all the time. My own but baby, there ain't even a bed in there. So I know. I just make me a pallet on the floor. Making me feel bad, yo! Alfred Woodard promises fake Moesha that she's gonna stop doing drugs and being a bad parent. It's a good ass scene. She's a good ass actor. That fucking stupid music though kicks in every time and just ruins everything for me. I am not gonna be around drugs anymore. No, ma'am. Mm -mm, not in this life. I can get some of my poetry together. Good writers have to go through a whole lot of stuff. I've been through this. I just gotta write it down. Child, where'd you learn to eat? The army? I wanna make you a deal, and I've already prayed on it. You need to let us stay here. Look, Holiday, if you let us stay, I'll do anything you want. That's the deal. Okay, cool. How about you pay all the rent for me then? <laughs> Fuck y'all too, lame man. Don't get money Bing Rams lets the girls stay there. He a good man with good Christian values. Him and fake Moesha start bonding or whatever. Alfred Woodard sees it and she starts hating on them cause she a hater and a non-Christian. Why are you being so good to us? Just so you know, I don't do fat. But I don't do no count evil bitches who sleep all day instead of taking care of their damn children. They start being a nice, happy family now. Alfred Woodard brings over a plate of dookie or whatever oh the God. fuck this fucking gross looking food is. What is it anyway? I don't know. From here on out, let's say I do all the cooking. It's a happy hood movie now. Bing Rames made the family happy. He taking care of them. It's like a fake Miss Doubtfire, kinda. I'm sorry. I still can't take this shit too seriously. I think it's just too low budget. It's a made for TV movie, so it has that sort of distinct feel. I really don't like that. They're dealing with some serious issues here, but it's filmed like a comedy almost. This shit look like Scary Movie 2. Happy birthday, Nikki! That's why you spent the whole week at my house. Your mother was up all day and night doing this. Thanks, Mom. You're the best mother in the whole wide world. I love you so much. <laughs> Ring Rams gets Alfred Woodard a job and she starts going to church and loving Christian. Wait, is this nigga an angel or something? Is that the twist? He a gay angel? Nah, cause he got a whole backstory and shit, right? I think he a regular person. Also, this shit is not a Christmas movie, by the way. I thought this was a Christmas hood movie. This nigga name is just Holiday. It's not even fucking Christmas. They singing more church songs and Alfred Woodard's been clean for a while. They feeding all the homeless people now when she runs into her evil, non-Christian ex-boyfriend. He trying to give her drugs and make her come do junkie activities. If you want more where that came from, you know where to find me. Yes. 
Nikki, keep working them stories, right? Mm. It's like I was talking about. Mm. Warrior women! Oh! I'm Nikki, I'm okay. I'm so scared, Nikki. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. Bubba Gump Shrimp is in the movie now for some reason. He a drug dealer, he a real smooth guy, he get bitches, everybody love him. What's a fine woman like you doing in the place with all these fags, man? Uh, nigga, what the fuck are you doing here? Oh yeah, he a drug dealer. It's probably a good place to sell drugs, actually. And what kind of pickup line is that, bro? She's clearly enjoying herself right now. These people are her friends. Why are you insulting her friends, nigga? How's that helping? <laughs> Tell me about Alfred Woodard starts to fall for him because she got a weakness for men and for drugs and for men that sell drugs. So they boyfriend and girlfriend now. Honey, I was up and down Michigan Avenue picking up this and that for you, Nikki. So when did you move in? Or did we go shack up with him? Bubba Gump Shrimp moves in and he takes over the whole family. This shit happened so quickly, I swear to God, I thought I was tripping. Hey, uh, I need to talk to you, Holiday. <laughs> Nick, man, we ain't got shit to talk about. Hey, man, I'm talking to you. You're fucking bitch. Hey, oh, what? fuck. Oh, I'm coming to All them little dinners and them little outings, ain't gonna be no more of that shit. And I just gotta start taking my fatherly duties seriously because I can't have my little girl being influenced by a man who wears a dress. <laughs> Alfred Woodard and her daughter stopped talking to Ving Rhames. They still live across the hall with Bubba Gump Shrimp. He rented the place out, remember? I don't know. It's really sad though, I think. Except he actually seems like a good guy a little bit. He's being an active dad and he's not letting Alfred Woodard do the drugs and shit. He cooking shrimp? I'm conflicted. In high step faces, I take back what I said earlier about wearing a suit. You look kind of goofy in the suit. Go back to the ladies' clothes. You look like a damn oatmeal salesman. Well, I, I stopped over at the shop. They said you aren't working there anymore. Can you put it no. I just, just wanted to really concentrate. I, just, I think that's the key. I wanted to. T I just wanted to focus totally. Wanda, I know you, girl. <laughs> Things ain't all bliss, are they? I'm fine. I'm fine, honey. Nick is fine. We are fine. Speaking of looking crazy in a suit, Ving Rhames' homeboy Blue shows up again. He's wearing a suit also. This shit is gigantic. Where'd you get this fucking suit? Is this Ving Rhames' suit, bro? This nigga look like a gay Tommy Davidson. Miss Holiday, I want you to meet my baby. <laughs> I call him Farmer. Girl, he got himself 40 acres and a mill. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. He tells Ving Rhames that he's moving away to go live with some farmer. He's gonna live on a farm now or something. Who even cares, bro? This nigga is barely in the movie. I think he's supposed to be a comic relief type character or something. He kind of represents the fun, happy gayness, and Ving Rhames is the sad gayness. I think that's what they're trying to do. He's not in it enough though. I'm so happy that you are finally getting away from the me, myself, and I bitches. It's Especially that pipe sucking bitch, Miss Wanda. Wanda don't want to be saved, baby. She want them microwave bitches. She want everything quick. If I, who ain't got a single Christian bone in my body, can still get somebody. No Prince Charming is just waiting to drop out of heaven for you. Mm -hmm. Ving Rhames is finally about to move on with his life and go to France. It's almost time to go, but Bubba Gump stops by and asks Ving Rhames for a favor. Look, man, I gotta go out of town on business, all right? Wanda and I, we just need a little break. Oh, Jesus, this fool must think I really care. Wanda's in trouble. They call Johnny Cochran. They tell me he's a miracle worker. Ving Rhames refuses to help anymore. Fake Moesha is sad now because her friend's moving to France and her TV show got canceled. She don't look nothing like Moesha, by the way. I don't know why I started calling her Moesha. She's watching Ving Rhames drive away and she's gonna miss him. She's gonna miss all his jokes and his cooking and his fucking stupid ass Bon Jovi haircut, nigga. This nigga got a Medieval Times haircut. He changes his mind before he gets to the airport. He decides to go back and talk to Alfred Woodard or go help some more or whatever. She's been gone for two days. 
Why didn't you tell me, Nikki? Because I thought you were mad at me. I mean, the way we treated you. Sing to me, Holiday. So yeah, they can't find the mom. She just disappears and Ving Rhames is the mom now, I guess. I'm sorry. He's raising fake Moesha and they a happy family again. Bubblegum Shrimp shows back up with some gifts and now I think he's gonna be the dad. They having fun dad moments. They playing Smash Bros. It's pretty fake looking. They not really playing. This is hands down the fakest video game playing I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> I'm trying to prepare for service tomorrow. Why don't you come play? The green button a jump. Ooh. Ooh, that little white man jumped over that big black ball. Nigga, that's not even Smash Bros anymore. That's an entirely different game now. What the fuck? They were not playing this shit just now. This shit not even two players. Bubba Gump Shrimp and the girl are hanging out. He gets a call and now he gotta go make a drugs delivery. Yeah, I'm gonna drop you at home. Go handle this little business. I just wanna ride. I'll wait for you in the car while you make your delivery. The little girl wanders off like an asshole. What's wrong with you, dumbass? You know how much trouble Bubba Gump could be in if he lost this fucking random kid that's not even his? She's going to look for her mom and shit, and she finds her in this dirty ass crack house. That's crazy she remembered how to get to this crack house. That's probably her mom's favorite crack house. That's so sad. Sad hood movie. We can be a family again. Just the two of us. Who's this little mama? Ah! Uh -uh. <laughs> you better leave her alone. I thought you called me. Baby. Come on. No, 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 baby. I'd rather break this sweet young thing. This is my baby. Nikki, he just want to kiss you. You big girl. Big kiss, little girl. Ah! Oh, Damn, bro. This shit is too much. This shit is not funny at all. I kind of fucked up picking this movie. I don't know why I thought this shit was some fucking fun Miss Doubtfire type shit. This shit ruined my whole episode. Fuck Bubba Gump Shrimp feels bad now for losing the kid and he leaves. The whole family's falling apart now. First they happy, then they sad, then they happy again. Then they sad again. It's like rapid fire sad things now. It's too much, bro. You're supposed to have breaks. Man, I almost got her killed last night. She'll need me. Later. Silence. No, silence. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, it's fucking Christmas now. So it is a Christmas movie. All right, well then. Christmas hood movie, shit. Alfred Woodard comes back and she's more fucked up than ever before. She starts talking to Ving Rhames about this bike that he bought for Moesha. She had a bike and it was kind of like this. I probably messed it up. I just, oh, they please let me come home. Yes, yes, Wanda, yes. Now I'm gonna go get my check and I'll be right back. Mm. Coincidentally, that one psycho, pervert, non-Christian dude from the crack house is here, for some reason, just randomly, hanging out parked in the fucking alley. Alright, movie, you're fucking pushing that shit, man. It's almost like Tyler Perry level shit. You better fucking relax, bro. Ah! Ah, no! Cowboy! Hey! Come get this Stop. bike! Get out of here, man. I said I want my damn bike! I'm gonna knock your bitch ass out. Come on, Round one. Come on, pussy. They have their final battle now. It's our main hero versus this random light skinned sexual predator. Nigga, who fucking are you? They should have got somebody scarier for this role, too, while we're at it. This nigga not intimidating. He look like he in fucking B2K. Come on, bro. What is this slippery tracksuit? This nigga look like Missy Elliott. Motherfucker. Oh, Jesus. Come on, Wanda. It's Wanda. Come on. Wanda. Oh, fuck. Oh, I'm coming to 
Alfred! Alfred Woodard dies and everybody happy now. Then Rames moves to France and he takes Moesha with him and it's nice, it's a nice ending. He a gay angel. Also, Blue is happy too. He work on the farm or something, nobody care. He a non-Christian, he can eat a dick. All in all, I gotta say, it's a fine movie. Ving Rhames obviously stole the show. This nigga completely transformed himself. He seemed genuine too. Like, really genuine. Like, this nigga gay, bro. Nah, it's fine. I'm <laughs> it's an amazing performance. It's probably his best performance. It's the best I've ever seen him. He's almost unrecognizable. Alfred Woodard did great too. I'm so used to seeing her in more powerful roles. This was kind of a switch up for both of them. They both took these drastically different roles and it worked out. They worked well together. The script was solid. It was cool. It's just some of the other creative choices holding the movie back, like the cinematography and the terrible garbage score. That music is so generic, and the editing and shit. It's just all really, really hallmarky, and that's not good. Robert Townsend is the director. He does these sort of cheesy, whimsical feeling type black movies. He's kind of like a friendly Spike Lee almost. I've never been a huge fan of his style personally, but it's cool that he directed this. He's not gay and shit, he's a straight dude. It's cool that he kind of gets it. We need movies and shit like this to help us sort of humanize gay or transgender niggas, cause they real people, and there's a lot of them. And they so gay, and they're never gonna stop. They're here forever. The movie did feel a little tedious at times. Sometimes it's just sad scene after sad scene with no breaks in between. All the scenes have really good acting, but there's barely any build up to them. Like this shit feels like a sad hood movie compilation and not an actual movie sometimes. Like the performances are really good though. They're performing all the sad hood stuff really well and the writing is good too. It's kind of unusual. I really wish this wasn't a TV movie. Robert Townsend's a legend though. He an important nigga. Thank you for making movies, bro. You are all star. That's it. Special thanks to my wallet, Ridge Wallets. Get a Ridge Wallets. Ridge.com slash prim for 10% off and free shipping worldwide. See you next time for all the sad gay hood movies. Don't do drugs unless you really want to. And alright then. It's over. Who that little white man jumped over that big black ball?